Hey guys, Will here. So today we're taking a look at the newly updated CSL Universal Hub V2 from Fnatic. Now, we took a look at the original version of this a couple of years ago now, and while overall it was a relatively good product as an entry point into sim racing if you needed the cheapest way to connect whatever wheel you wanted to your Fnatic wheelbase, there are a couple of things about it that we weren't very impressed with and we thought should have been better and could have been better for the money. So what we're gonna be doing today is quickly revisiting this product, seeing whether they've improved on those things that we complained about before, and also having a look at how this presents in terms of value for money, because they are bundling this with a couple of different wheels and different options to get you up and racing at a pretty aggressive price point. So let's dive in and check it out. Okay, so firstly, as always, to kick off here, a quick thank you to Fnatic for sending across the new V2 hub for us to check out. They've also sent across a selection of a few different rims, which I'm gonna be showing you in today's video as well. And we also do have most of their other gear here in the studio as well, which you can reference throughout today's video. So big thank you to them for making it possible by sending us across everything to check out and make this video. Now, as is always the case, if you do decide you wanna pick up any of the gear we're talking about in today's video, there will be some links down in the description below. Those are an awesome way of helping support our work here at Boost of media at no additional cost to you guys if you find what we do here of benefit and helpful to you guys. So we really appreciate your support there. But as is always the case, no external involvement here at all in anything we're saying. Everything I'm gonna be talking about today is purely just my own observations and my own opinions. And they don't get to see the video before you guys do. So let's dive in now. Firstly, talking about pricing and how these deals that I was just referencing in the intro work. So the price for the Universal Hub V2 on its own comes in at uh, 149.95 euro. 149.95 US dollars or 249 dollars 90 if you're in Australia or in Japan it's 20,000 yen just make sure you're checking your local pricing and taxes things like that to make sure that uh, you don't have any surprises there but look it's pretty straightforward with Fnatic because they only sell through their online store anyway so there's not really any options for purchasing anywhere else so yeah but just keep those taxes and things like that in mind now what they're doing with this is they're making it so if you purchase it in conjunction with one of nine of their wheel rims which are the rims that don't have any sort of button box attached them literally just a dumb steering wheel like that. So there's a selection of nine different steering wheels ranging from 270 millimeter like what we have here all the way through to 330 millimeters like this guy. We'll list them all on the screen for you guys with a couple of pictures so you can see what they are. But if you buy this in conjunction with any one of those rims, they're doing it for 199.95 euro. But then they also have the deal with the CSL DD at the moment where if you buy a wheel in conjunction with the CSL DD, they do the CSL DD for 199.95 as well. So what that means is that you can get a complete package with the wheelbase, the hub, and a wheel, obviously without pedals, for under 400 euro, which is a really good deal, particularly when you consider, uh, say, the Mozza R3, for example. That comes in a little bit more expensive depending on where you are in the world once you factor in taxes and shipping. And that comes bundled with pedals, which aren't really very good, and most people are probably ultimately going to be updating anyway. Now, Fnatic, of course, do also offer bundles that include pedals, and that can be even better value still. But the pedals that they're including are the CSL pedals, which aren't absolutely fantastic. There's nothing wrong with them. We've got reviews of them linked down in the description below if you want to check them out for more details. But basically, look, the CSL pedals are likely to be something that a lot of people that get more serious about sim racing are likely to want to upgrade from. Whereas if you buy a bundle like this that doesn't include pedals, you're free to choose pretty much whatever pedals you want, which uh, you know makes this a pretty good value option, at least in my opinion, provided that this actually does provide a good experience. And that's what we're going to be checking out today. So hopefully that all makes sense. If you have any questions, hit us up in the comments down below. Or if you follow the links down in the description below we have a page on our website where we've gone through all the discounts and explained them all in detail for you guys so that it all makes perfect sense so the last thing you need to be aware of before we dive into the nitty-gritty on this thing is compatibility so this isn't an xbox compatible hub that means that it won't work on xbox regardless of what you do if you have a playstation and a playstation compatible wheelbase from Fnatic, then this will work so with Fnatic, the or with most manufacturers for that matter the xbox compatibility comes from a chip inside the wheel itself or the hub and playstation compatibility comes from a chip inside the wheelbase. So if you wanted to use it on an Xbox, unfortunately you are out of luck, but if you're on a PS4 or PS5 and you have a PS compatible base, or if you're running on a PC, this is gonna work for you just fine. Other thing to explain quickly as well is when it comes to quick releases, this does ship with the simplified quick release or QR1 
inside a separate box. What they've been doing for a while now with all their V2 wheels is shipping these separately so that you can have the option to upgrade to the club sport quick release, which is the metal style quick release, which you find on the back of their club sport wheels, like this guy here. And that has its own advantages and disadvantages. We explored that in a lot of detail in our original review of the V1 of this hub. So if you're wanting more detail on those quick releases, you can check that one out. Now there will, of course, at some point, and we've been waiting for this for far too long now, uh, there will at some point be a QR2 quick release system as well. And I understand that there will be some sort of a simplified, cheaper version available for that style quick release as well. But what this means is that you're gonna be able to upgrade this to the QR2 style as well, should you wish to do so. So that's the reason why they package them separately. So it's as simple as just bolting it on yourself with the six bolts that they include just here. You just remove the little cap off the pins and you're good to go. So let's take a more detailed look at the hardware now. So there were two complaints that I had with the original V1 of this unit. That was the amount of flex that we had in the shifter paddles themselves. And then the flex that we had inherent in this design that allows you to expand the diameter by 60 millimeters to account for the different size rims that you might be wanting to use it with. So you can see now they've actually added this additional metal bracing here, which does give it a lot more rigidity. Now it's loose at the moment. We'll get it mounted on a wheel in a minute to show you the improvements that they've made there. But uh, look, those, those are the two major improvements. And they say in their literature here that the metal bracing has improved the rigidity by 23% compared to V1. They don't state a number for the paddles themselves. Now these actually look identical, at least externally, but I did notice immediately that they have a lot less flex just holding it like this than they did previously. And then other than that, it's just cosmetic changes to the buttons on the front and whatnot. All the other functionality is still pretty much exactly the same. So we've got two toggle switches here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight push buttons. We've got a rocker switch here too, and then a seven way funky switch with down, up, right, left, and rotary encoder functionality. Same access to the tuning menu and telemetry via the little seven segment display that we have, or three by seven segment display, I should say, on the front. And the same mounting patterns as well with metal nut certs for mounting your wheels. So we've got a three by 50 millimeter stud pattern, as well as a 70 millimeter by six stud pattern here too. So it's gonna be compatible with the vast majority of wheels. They don't recommend that you use this for wheels any bigger than about 330 millimeter. And it's also not really suitable for using with wheels that have a dish on them, like the NASCAR wheel, for example. You can imagine if you had this mounted behind it, the shifters are just going to be way too far away from where your hands are to really be useful. But any of the flat style wheels or wheels that have a really minor dish like this uh, R330 that we have here, for example, uh, those are all going to work absolutely fine. And we'll mount some of these up to show you in just a moment. So a couple of other super quick things just to point out here as well. Weight of the device is 660 grams. So the hub itself is relatively sturdy, but not too heavy by any means. Obviously, you do need to combine that weight with whatever wheel you end up using on top of it. And then lastly, just quickly, to point out there is a little USB-C port on the top of the hub here, exactly the same as what we saw on the V1. So I just wanted to point out to you guys that although it is a standard USB-C port, it isn't running a standard USB-C protocol for your PC. So it doesn't mean you can just plug in any peripheral. This is gonna be solely just for expanding their own ecosystem into the future. So the button module endurance is one particular example of a Fnatic peripheral, which does use that proprietary protocol through the USB-C port, although that particular accessory isn't compatible with this particular hub. Hub. So I'm guessing they must be releasing some other new stuff later on down the track, but they just haven't released anything yet that utilizes that port. But just in case you're wondering, no, you can't just plug in some other USB wheel into that USB port and have it all function through the base. So just lastly, before we mount up a wheel on this thing and go for a drive, just want to quickly talk about the quick release in a little bit more detail. And we talked quickly before about the upgrade path from the simplified quick release like this to the club sport style quick release you see on this particular wheel. One thing to be aware of there is if you do have a DD1 or DD2, exactly like what we see with Fnatic's other entry level wheels and the V1 of this particular hub, if you've got the simplified style quick release, you'll notice it's got this little pin on here, whereas the metal quick release doesn't have that pin. Now, if we put this onto the back of the hub, you can hear when I push it in, there's that little click. So there's actually a little button inside here what that pin does is it pushes on that button and that tells the hub to disable high torque mode on the DD1 and DD2. And that is just to protect the wheel and wheelbase because this quick release isn't designed to handle those high torque levels. So, I mean, take from that what you want. You could just shave the, uh, shave the little leg off here and enable that high torque, but then obviously you would be voiding your warranty. So I don't suggest that anybody does that, but just wanted to point out there is that mechanical difference between the two. So if you are wanting to run this on a DD1 or DD2, then you will need to look at the Club Sport 
uh, quick release or just wait for the QR2 to be released. So what about the driving experience? Has it improved from the V1? Very happy to report, yes, indeed it has. So I tested this between all of the, uh, well, not every single wheel, but a variety of different wheels between 270 millimeter all the way through to 330 millimeter, which is what they recommend. And across the board, the experience was much, much, much better than it was with the V1 wheel. Look, I, I was always quite happy with the feeling of the buttons for the price point. I didn't really have any complaints there whatsoever. They do have quite a nice snappy and responsive feel to them. Absolutely nothing to complain about for the price point whatsoever. The complaints that I had, as I mentioned before, were the inherent flex in this assembly moving forward and backwards, and then the flex in the shifters themselves. And look, as you can see here, and as you'll see in the driving footage, pulling in the middle, you can see at the normal amounts of pull that you would be doing for shifting gears, absolutely no discernible flex there. So yeah, no issues at all with the wings of this thing bending in and out when you're pushing buttons or changing gears. And then with the shifters themselves, look, there is still a little bit of flex there. You can feel a bit of squishiness at the bump stops, but the main issue with the previous model was when you pulled on the top or on the bottom, the whole thing bent and buckled and it just felt terrible. Whereas now, there's still a little bit of flex there. I'm not gonna obviously lie, but to me, that is what I would say is more than acceptable at this kind of price point. And that's consistent with the variety of different rims that we tested this with as well. Now, one thing I will mention with regards to the shifters is that the actual feeling of the shift click or the engagement of the shifter paddle is the same as it was on the V1. So definitely not something that I would say is fantastic. I think it's adequate for the price considering the discounts that they put on the bundles that they have in place now but it does still just feel like you're activating a micro switch. Whereas if you step up to the Club Sport Universal Hub V2, you do actually get the magnetic paddles with that, which are much, much, much better. So if that's something that's important to you, then it's definitely worth considering that product. This is a V1 that we have here, but uh, for all intents and purposes, the build quality and everything is the same on the V2. But look, I just, I was never a big fan of the look of these ones. They just kind of look a little bit kind of bootleg, I guess is probably a, a best way to describe it. It makes it nice and universal. It makes it compatible with a variety of different rims, of course. But this one just looks a little bit more clean. I like that they've moved away from the rainbow colors as well. It just makes it look a lot more tidy. And the way they've laid it out, although this was the same with the V1 as well, but it's worth pointing out, the way they've recessed the buttons here so they sit a little bit behind the plate means that it is compatible with a variety of aftermarket rims as well. So if you've got a Sparco, an OMP, or a Momo wheel, for example, obviously it will depend on the wheel. It's not gonna be compatible with absolutely everything but you'll find the, the vast majority of wheels that fit within that 270 to uh, 330 millimeter range should all work pretty well for this hub. And thinking about this a little bit more deeply, I think when you consider the fact that you can combine the hub and a rim from Fnatic and get the two for the same price as what you'd be paying for the McLaren GT3 V2 wheel, which we've long regarded now for a number of years as the best value for money wheel available in sim racing. Look, I mean, obviously this, is, this, this, this ticks a lot of boxes, but it's certainly not the most versatile thing in the world if you wanted to do a variety of different driving styles. Whereas with this, you've got a variety of nine different shapes and size wheels that you can combine, all very high quality as well. Well, this is actually a podium rim, so this looks a little bit nicer, but you saw the other rims in the driving footage earlier as well. They're all aluminium rims. They are nice, high quality Alcantara, or in the case of the R300, genuine leather, I believe. That's what it says on their website, at least. Anyway, it lists it as leather, so I assume it's genuine leather. But yeah, look, these are all very nice, high quality rims that you're getting for the money. And, uh, you know, whereas this, with this, you're making a little bit more sacrifice in terms of just the materials being used and the overall quality. So yeah, overall, when you consider the quality of the rims that you're getting, the improved quality now of the universal hub, the price point, and the fact that you can combine it with a CSLDD at five Newton meters without pedals for 400 euro, I think that is pretty darn good value overall. So yeah. It's definitely a thumbs up from me. I wish that they got it right the first time two years ago. I was disappointed with the original V1 Universal Hub, but it's great to see that they have improved upon it, although it did take longer than it maybe should have. But what we've ended up with here is definitely a hub, which I think gives you a good high quality entry point into direct drive sim racing, gives you plenty of adaptability and versatility. And uh, yeah, I think it ticks all the necessary boxes, so no issues at all in recommending it. So I really hope that today's video has helped you out. Guys, if it has, please do leave a thumbs up. If you wanna pick up any of the things that you've seen in today's video, we've got some links down in the description below, which are an awesome way of helping support our work here at Boosted Media and no additional cost to you. So we really appreciate your support there. But above all, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again very soon. Bye.